The Key to Extraordinary by Natalie Lloyd A lot of scenes in this book revolve around the kitchen and unusual but delicious muffins. Do you like to experiment in the kitchen? Experiment is exactly the right word for what I do in the kitchen. The most important kitchen utensil I own is a fire extinguisher. I have even, accidentally, set a pot of spaghetti on fire. I'm not very savvy in the kitchen, but I have wonderful memories of being in a kitchen with the women in my family, especially my mom and grandmothers. One of my favorite kitchen memories is watching my grandmothers make biscuits. I remember how the flour looked on their hands, and I remember watching them pat out the dough. Even though my biscuits don't turn out as good or edible as theirs, I find myself trying to make biscuits exactly the same way. I think recipes that get passed down like that make you feel close to the people you love. And I also think, culturally, feeding people and sharing food is a special way we show love. That's probably why I have Emma in the kitchen with Granny Blue. They love spending that time together, and it's also a sweet way they take care of one another. And admittedly, it's fun to research different magical kinds of treats I can add to a story. Question number two. What song holds a special memory for you? Natalie responds by saying, There's a hymn we sang in the church where I grew up called Because He Lives. I still remember how the spine of the hymnal cracked against my fingertips, and I remember the pounding sound of the piano. Most of all, I remember how happy people sounded when they sang the song. Sometimes it seemed like our voices tangled together and grew wings and floated up to the ceiling. When I think of that song now, I still feel happy. However, I also adore Granny Blue's fight song, which is Ring of Fire by Johnny Cash. My dad is a fan of classic country, so that kind of music makes me think of being a kid again, riding around with him in his truck. And songs by Johnny Cash make me feel a little brave and rowdy, like Granny Blue. That said, when Granny Blue gets rowdy, she thinks about her boxing days or ways to save the cafe. The most rowdy thing I do is read the last chapter of a book before I read the beginning. I fell into a burning ring of fire. I went down, 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 and the flames went higher. And it... Question number three. Blackbird Hollow is written as though it is a place you are intimately familiar with. Have you been to a place like Blackbird Hollow? Yes. I grew up in a small town in East Tennessee. I lived near family. My granny lived in between mine and my cousin's house. If you've lived near family, or in a small town, or both, you know what it's like to have a special connection with a place. You probably also know what it's like to have people in your business all the time. Ha! Ah. One of the sweetest parts of growing up in my small town was that there was an active storytelling culture and people particularly loved to tell stories about family. My grandparents used to go put flowers on graves in a nearby graveyard once a year. They called it decorating day. My brother and I would go with them. The trunk of their car would be overflowing with silk flowers, and we would walk beside them, tuck flowers against stones, and listen to stories about these wonderful people we'd never known. Since then, I've liked visiting old graveyards, I like to read the names on the stones, like Emma, and imagine what was happening during the time that person was alive. I also heard someone say that he actually goes to a graveyard to make important life decisions, because it helps him put things in perspective. I thought that quote was very poignant, and it made me think about what it would be like to be surrounded by graves all the time. And just because I'm a little bit sappy, there's a sweet story about Key. While I was writing the book, I went on a first date with a really wonderful guy. He asked what I liked to do for fun, and because I was researching the book at that time, I blurted out, 
I like to walk around in old graveyards. I doubt this is typically a person's idea of a good time, but he didn't seem phased. He was on my heart when Emma said to Waverly Valentine, Love hasn't given up on you. We're still together, and when I read that line in the book now, I'm reminded of the sweet magic that was happening in that particular season of my life. Question number four. Did you know from the beginning that Blue would rediscover her destiny? I did. I pretty much knew how the book would end before I started writing it, and I knew part of the journey for Blue had to do with destiny, too. Emma Pearl is stepping into her destiny. She's finding that balance between taking part of the great legacy you come from and finding out what's unique about herself. But Blue is redefining her destiny. She's realizing it's never too late to have a new beginning. There are moments in the story when Blue feels almost like things were winding up a little bit, but she eventually realizes age only makes her stronger, wiser, more beautiful, and more capable of having a wild adventure again. I do believe destiny is ultimately defined by the choices we make, and Blue decides to focus on the parts of her life she loves the most, being Granny to Emma and Topher. Blue is a fighter with a tender heart, and fighting for people she loves was really her destiny all along. Question number five. What advice can you offer our young writers as they learn to improve their skills? When my first novel came out, I had no idea I would get to spend time with young writers. It is one of the most exciting and inspiring things I get to do. Here's some advice I always share. Keep Reading. Reading is what helps us figure out how stories come together. And as you read stories you love, think about what it is that snags your heart. It is, is it the dialogue? Is it the pacing? Is it the way the authors make you forget you're even reading a book and feel instead like you're inside the book? Those are my favorite ones. Reading is still one of the most important parts of writing for me, too. Keep writing. Try all different kinds of writing. Poems, speeches, songs, short stories. I didn't start out writing novels, and most other writers don't either. The more you write, the better you'll get. Get feedback on your work. One of my favorite things about creative writing is that it can be just for you. You don't have to share everything you write, but if you hope to publish your work someday, it's good to learn how to receive feedback from teachers, friends, or family. And finally, I would say to remember that your words are magic. The words you choose to write, share, and say have tremendous power. Emma thinks she won't be extraordinary until she figures out her destiny dream, but she's already incredible. The same thing is true about you. You're extraordinary and you have important things to say. I believe you are so brave for writing and sharing your words with the world.